Hi everybody, you're at Belfast Underground Recording Studio with me, Graham Laverty. Okay, so today we are going to be looking at our remix of local band Scream Blue Murmur's Kingfisher Groove. So first of all, let's get a little listen to the original. Okay, so we are now looking at the Logic Project. Uh, this first channel has the original track on it, so I'll just skip through it and play a few of the main sections. Okay, so that was the original. Um, now, whenever we were first asked to do the mix, we weren't given any brief. It was just up to us to come up with a concept. Uh, what we ended up coming up with was just a house track. Because the tempo of the original already was 125, it just suited being a house track. Um, so now I think I'll give you a listen short bursts of the remix and then we'll get into how we actually went about creating it. Okay, so let's have a listen to the original bass line. This is unprocessed, uh, live bass. Um, and I'll just show you how we change that. Um, as you can see the different waveforms there, you can see immediately that we have cut it up. And I'll just play you the new groove that we made with it. Okay, you'll notice the tone has shifted. Uh, this was because we also added a sub bass underneath it, which is obviously filling all the bottom end. So the live bass was now able to just take the low mids. And we put a little bit of distortion growl on it with uh, Logic's um, bass amp. And we just used a preset for that and then just tweaked it until it's sat okay. Okay, so now we're going to look at the percussion and first off we're going to talk briefly about the kick drum. So if I just play that in solo. Uh, what I wanted to say about this kick drum, if we just play it with the track. Okay, just sits nicely in there, it's cutting through. I do have a parallel channel on it and if I mute that, you'll hear the kick drum nearly disappears. Um, let me just solo this parallel. So as you can hear, it's just a little high mid sound, um, but when it's in with the track, it makes a big difference. That's without it. And that'll bring it in. It just focuses the top end and kind of glues the percussion together. With the parts that we were sent, let me just play the original drum loop. Okay, it's just straight off the track. So there was quite a lot of low end in this, so 
which was going to clash with the kick drum. So what we had to do with it was strip that back, and put some compression on it, and we also cut the groove and made it slightly more repetitive. Some other stuff that we used from the original was the, well I've just named them like a syncopated drums. These come in to basically break up the rhythms. And again we just cut the bottom end out, not as much on those because whenever they play there is, the kick drum tends to be out or is at a very low volume. Um, but I thought it was quite important to have those in the track because they uh, do cut up the, the rhythm and keep things interesting. Uh, and finally for what we used from the original, uh, if I can just find the bongos. Okay, here we go. Again, we just time align these. Uh, made a kind of three bar loop and then every fourth bar I would just find a roll or variation and we would add that in just to keep it interesting. So they just that just helps keep it with a live feel. Okay, so now we'll take a look at the synth sounds. And we'll start with this square bass sound. So let me just play it in isolation. Okay. So I'll now play that with the bass lines, the other bass lines. So you can hear what it's doing. It comes in at the end of the bars. Kind of question answer with the sub. Uh, just keeps it interesting. Um, with that sound being a little bit higher in tone, it just cuts through the mix. I'll just play it with, uh, with everything. Okay, uh, that sound has some overdrive on it, just to bring out the top end. Um, we use this instead of an EQ, uh, because it gives a slightly different sound, and a nicer sound, I think. Um, so that covers the square bass. Now we'll look at the uh, stabs. So let me just play this main stab in isolation. So it's just a housey techno kind of stab. Um, we then had one that comes in later in the track that's the same sound, but it's just a hair, an octave hair. And they just bounce off each other. Now the kind of thinking behind the rhythm in those uh, stems from the original horns. So if I just play you the horns from the, the original mix. Here, there's two sounds um, that play off each other. Uh, the rhythm and that is is more repetitive. Uh, there's more notes, but we just wanted the groove a little bit more. So I came out, but it's a similar kind of vibe to it. So let me just play that in the track. Um, processing wise on those again, <clears throat> uh, distortion, EQ, um, we use this little plugin which is a kind of Logix transient designer, it's called an enveloper. It just gave the sound some more attack, make sure it definitely cuts through the mix. Um, we've probably also put a parallel on that, which should be doing more of the same making sure that it cuts through and um, then we have reverb and delay just to give it a space within the mix. Okay so now we'll have a look at the horn sections. The original track is made up, the instrumentation is mainly horns so we just knew from the outset that we were going to have to use those, taking them out wasn't really an option. Um, what we didn't want to do was just do the remix and have it not sound in anything like the original. Um, so I shall let you hear, if we listen again to the original. Ok, 
Okay, now let me just extend those over four bars so you can hear the kind of the, the riffs at the end. Okay, so we took those, uh, cut them up. There was four, I think all together there was four uh, separate horns recorded. So we took them, cut them, stacked them, and then bounced them so they would be one sound. And that sounded like this. Okay, so they've the been stripped back a fair bit. Um, again, our old friend distortion and saturation was used just to make them slightly heavier. Uh, some transient designer, the enveloper on Logic's own. Uh, auto filter was also used. Um, it's pretty good for fattening stuff up. Uh, in the mix, they sound like this. So they're kind of hitting along with the synth stabs and those two together make quite a fat sound. Okay, another um, section that I must show you that the, the guys in the band liked was the what we done with the trombone, which is we took a stab of it, I think a time stretched it, and then we put auto filter, and this is used at the end of uh, transitions. I shall just, uh, there's some volume automation in this, I'll just turn it up for you. Make sure everyone can hear it. That was the, I'll just play it in isolation. It was that little filter show. Okay, so that was just auto filter, sweeping from high to low, and some tape delay on it. One of my favorite plugins. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the, the uh, horn and drum rolls from the original that were used to kind of change up the, the rhythm and flow of the track. So let me just play the original for a second so you can hear what I'm talking about. Okay, so when I initially heard that I thought it sounded really cool so I didn't want to lose it. But it's whenever we tried to incorporate into the track that we found that it wasn't quite 4-4. Um, let me just play it in the breakdown and how it comes out on, on the remix and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. Okay, so the first thing I think we should look at is the sax and the drums as well. These are both from the original. Uh, in the breakdown, obviously you want to build tension um, so that whenever the track comes back in you get a big release. Hands in the air and all that. So let me just play these two elements. So there's a filter on on both of them actually at this point you can hear that we take the loop and uh, quarter it and it opens up again to the full shebang and then there is a little effect just at the end it's a uh, basically take the start of the the first sax set put loads of reverb on it Bounce it in, then reverse it. And you have a reverse effect. Works every time. Uh, we also had the bongos from the original plant. They probably have loads of delay building on them. So those on them. Auto filter and yeah, delay.
Now, one thing you will notice is at the end of that, it doesn't meet the end of the bar. To get this to work, we had to fill that in and try and make it sound natural. And we've done this with delays. Uh, and let's just play it. See. And a bongo roll at the end, which is just again from the original bongo track. Uh, just a bar of a cut up and time aligned with delay on it. Okay, so thanks for tuning in today. Um, that was just an overview of the Scream Blue Murmur remix. Uh, hopefully in the future we'll be able to do more specific uh, tutorials aimed at say the gating techniques used on this remix or the parallel chains. If you did enjoy today's video, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also check out our website. That's it from me and I'll see you later.